please welcome to the stage Shaquille O'Neal. And Coach Dave Madura of the 1989 Cole High School basketball team. You guys may have a seat. You know, this is not on the script, but I do want to say that this year's class, as in past classes, is a very fantastic representation of San Antonio both on and off the playing court and what they do for everyone that they come in contact with. And it's another example of the fine job that San Antonio sports does um, selecting this class, making sure that everyone that is selected into this Hall of Fame not only represents it on the court and what their accomplishments were, but the kind of people they are. And this this, I'm going to get in big trouble for saying this, but as a member of the board of San Antonio Sports, I'm going to make a decision to do it anyway. And that's big part is Russ Bookbinder and his executive staff. Russ, Mary, Myrna. They do a great job. Big hand for them. And the greatest, it may, it may not be an athlete, but the, the, the toughest, toughest athlete in the building uh, is sitting right next to Russ, and that's his wife, Tammy Bookbinder. She, she's the toughest person in here. All right, let's induct this class. You know, very few teams in high school sports capture the entire imagination of the entire city of San Antonio. It, it's happened a few times. We all remember Tommy Kramer and Lee High School in 1971 on the football field. We remember Stan Bonowitz and his son Stanley Jr. at East Central uh, in 1995. But probably the most unlikely group that captured the imagination of San Antonio, and if you were here in the late 80s, you remember that, was a little class 3A school of Army-based kids over at Fort Sam. For those who watched it happen, it is something they will never forget and we will never forget. They are the 2016 San Antonio Sports Hall of Famers, the 1989 Cole Cougars. They are a team frozen in time, sharing a common bond from an uncommon achievement. And neither time nor distance can separate them from their glory. Coming together, the bond was so strong, when we got there, it was like an awesome thing. I mean, it was something that I, I would never forget and I'd always remember, I mean, even to this day. The highlights that remain from 1989 focus around their superstar, but the Cole Cougars were a special group of teammates and friends that were more about just one man because truthfully, Shaquille O'Neal didn't make a great first impression. He was horrible. He was horrible when he showed up. He was probably about 6'9 at the time, and probably if he tried to dunk 10 times, he might get three. I remember Coach Madura actually telling us, you know, there's not no one hero on the team. It's a full team. Everybody plays. Everybody wins. And I believe that. The hero did, of course, turn out to be Shaq and his band of army base ballers. After going 32-1 and in 88, the Cole Cougars ran the table in 89. They won two playoff games in Kingsville, which got them one step further than the year before. A trip to Austin and the state final four. In a word, it was awesome. 
<laughs> amazing. And 27 years later, it's still awesome and amazing. <laughs> Our team and Shaquille have become so popular uh, that I'm signing autographs. <laughs> they have no clue who I am, you know, but I'm sitting there, hey, can I have your autograph? I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. And I'm, of course, I'm a bagger at a grocery store, you know, part time <laughs> on the weekends, and I'm signing autographs during the game. The Cougars beat Hearn in the semifinal, setting up a chance for a perfect season with a game against Clarksville in the final. Shaq led the way with 19 points and 26 rebounds. The Cougars won the state title, capping off a perfect undefeated season at 36-0. You know, like I told them before the game, gosh, guys, you know, we put all that stuff in the paper, but people in Clarksville don't read the San Antonio paper. They don't know how good you are. It makes it better when you beat a good team like that. And they knew then, as they do now, that they were a part of something special. But with military families being transferred all over the world, the fact that we even got to play basketball together for two years uh, was kind of a feat in itself, you know? And it definitely wasn't lost on us when, when we finally got there. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was a very neat, and I, and I could probably speak for Eric and, and uh, other guys on the team, that was probably some of the best times of our lives. Please welcome the 1989 Cole High School 3A State Championship basketball team. They are Andy Armando, Eric Baker, Joe Caballero, Dwayne Cyrus, Robbie Dunn, Sean Jackson, Coach Dave Madura, Darren Mathy, Assistant Coach Herb Moore, Shaquille O'Neal, Jeff Petrus, Doug Sandberg, Dan Sandberg, John Scherner, and unable to attend, Kyle Henson, Tony Richardson. Please welcome assistant coach Ken Kumarara and team manager Mike Minito, statisticians Trey Halliburton and Chris Jennings. What a group, huh? Coach Madura. In recognition of your undefeated season, 36-0, and, and the state championship in 1989, on behalf of the City of San Antonio, San Antonio Express News, and San Antonio Sports, it is my pleasure to induct you and the team into the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame. We got to do some housekeeping real quick. We got to take a, a photo because it's the only chance we're going to be able to get everybody together, including Daryl. So I'm going to get out of the way so they can take this picture and then we're going to interview Coach. Everybody squeeze in. Coach, we were talking backstage a little bit, and you wanted to say how impressed you were with this group of young men right here. And it shows again that they showed up, all of them, for these reunions, how close this group was. And you said it was they were real close in 89. They, uh, well, they had to be. The, to have the type of season they had was, was unparalleled. And as I've always said, shame team. But that team also helped make Shaq what he is today. And that was, that was, and, and I think probably Shaq would be the first one to admit that. It was a, kind of a unique situation in that being on a military school, you didn't, you know, you didn't know if you were going to have kids more than a year at a time. You'd, you'd get one ready you thought to play and all of a sudden they're gone. But this group 
we luckily had, most of them had been there two or three years. And it was a really a unique experience. And you also said that the, um, of course, the parents are all special that are serving our country, living on Fort Sam. But you said it was a special group of parents and a group of families that is close still to this day. Yes, certainly. They, uh, the support that the parents gave and the help they gave us. And, you know, probably a lot of them maybe passed up assignments that would have bettered them to stay in Fort Sam. It was a uh, unique group of people. And Eric, where's Eric? Eric's right behind me. I talked to Eric earlier this week, and I wanted to, to have him say this, because what you told me I thought was, was very profound, and that was all these years later, your, fa your claim to fame is, you know, you played high school basketball with Shaquille O'Neal, but you said Shaq's not the one that you remember from high school. It's somebody else who's very special. Coach Madur, Holly Gully. <laughs> What kind of impact did he have on you guys? A great one, a great one. As you can see, we're all standing here today. And I mean, we're just blessed to be here. I mean, we're, we're carrying on with our lives and we're taking it with us wherever we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, your 1989 Cole Cougars. Pretty cool to see the emotion of these guys, 40, 45 years old, and you know, we, we, we don't say it enough about the influence and impact that high school coaches and middle school coaches have on grown people. I think that's the biggest testament, not the medals that they won around their neck in 1989, but the, the guys they turned out to be, I think that's a great testament to Coach Madura. All right, I gotta admit, when we, uh, when we dug through the archive tape, for our next inductee, we found the, uh, the gold medal race of the 4 by 400 meter relay at the Athens Olympics. And uh, it, it was, we're watching it in real time. Tom Hammond's on the call on NBC. And I couldn't help, I've I, I got to be honest with you, I got, I got a little choked up because it was like, hey, there's one of our own. A kid from Holmes High School, a San Antonian, who decided to run his own race away from adversity as a child that he endured, to a high school track star, to an all-American college career Baylor, to a college degree, to an Olympic gold medal, to become a hero for foster care children, and a successful business career. Wow, now he has run his way, his race, all the way into the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame. He is 2016 Hall of Famer Darrell Williamson. Darrell Williamson holds the anchor for Baylor, the seven-time NCAA champions in this event. Special athletes like this maybe come, come through once in a coach's career. Looks like Potter is trying to make a move on Williamson. He has such a, just such a natural, beautiful stride. Baylor in front, Darren Williamson. He is gliding to the finish for Baylor. Darren Williamson provided us many thrilling moments, and it all began at Holmes High School, kind of by accident. And track and field is something I learned about as I got older. Um, started looking into it, ran a little bit in high school found out I was good. <laughs> I remember the little skinny kid as a sophomore that was so, so skinny, you could he could take his shirt off and you could see his heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, he always says that. He always says that. Really didn't know what, what we had in the making, but you, you knew that there was something special about that young man. Something special indeed, but not just as an athlete, but as an all-around young man, qualities he credits to a loving grandmother. 
that was our household. My grandmother, my, my two brothers, and just, she, you know, she stayed on us. She, you know, she, she made sure we stayed focused. Um, you know, I excelled in the classroom as well as on the track and, and played a little high school football also, but I had a really good support system, even with just being a single grandmother. Um, I'm very, very grateful to have had her. After racking up a trophy case full of hardware at Holmes High School, Daryl took the next step at Baylor. And it only took uh, one time watching Daryl. He was such a competitor. Uh, uh, he, you could see that he had that drive, inner drive. Of course, he had lots of natural ability. Uh, Daryl was an outstanding high school 400 runner, so it was a no-brainer. Uh, Daryl just did the evolving, getting better each year like you're supposed to do. Four NCAA titles, 13 All-American honors, three Big 12 championships, and in between all that, a gold medal at the Olympics in Athens. I anchor the team with the first three runners that have swept the, the, you know, the 400 events. So I had the number one, number two, and number three 400 meter runners in the world running the lead legs. And I anchored, all I had to do was basically get the baton around. So um, I was really, really excited, but I was, it was a, it was a really relaxed race. Um, it was, it was, it's an awesome, it was an awesome experience in itself. So. Huge victory for the United States. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate Daryl on this great honor. He's certainly one that he deserves. I wanted to say congratulations on this tremendous honor. You definitely deserve it, and I'm proud of you, and I'm proud of the man that you've become. So to see all this come, come to, to, you know, to light, it's just, it's, it's really, it's really cool. It's a really cool event. Um, I'm really, really excited about it, so thank you. Daryl, on behalf of San Antonio Sports, the Express News, and the city of San Antonio, it is my pleasure to officially induct you into the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame. I tell you what, watching that video, Don's right, it just kind of gives you goosebumps. And I mean, you were like 10 miles ahead of everybody else. <laughs> what, what's up with that? I mean, could those guys not run or what? Well, my first three legs swept the 400 meters, and I just had to cap it off. So uh, we had a big lead. Uh, I extended a little bit, and you know, that's, that's, that's what you saw. <laughs> For all us average Joes up here, What's it feel like to stand on that podium, national anthem playing, and to wear that gold medal? Uh, it, meant, it meant a lot. Um, you know, it's one thing to represent your city, represent your state, your, your universities, uh, but to represent your country, uh, it was a great feeling. Um, you know, just being draped with that flag and representing a lot of, a lot of people, uh, it was a very special, special event and uh, priceless. I'll, I'll remember forever, for sure. I gotta, I gotta say this, because I gotta brag on you. Anybody that says they can't do something needs to look at Daryl Williamson. Daryl, your childhood was not the greatest. You had a great grandmother, but you overcame some adversity to become the man you are today. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your childhood? Uh, well, you know, a lot of people have uh, uh, childhoods they have to overcome uh, obstacles, but, um, you know, I just... I was always focused on, 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 on being successful. I, I definitely had a great support system. I had a great childhood. It was a different childhood, but it was great. Um, uh, so um, I wouldn't change it for the world. I wouldn't change it. Uh, it's made me the man I become, uh, taking care of my, my, my daughters today, um, just being the best that I could be. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a father around and stuff like that, but. That's why, she's yelling, that's why I, uh, 
Uh, that's why I work hard to, to be who I am for, for my family. And uh, like I said, I wouldn't change it for the world. Daryl Williamson, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations, Daryl. That's a great young man right there, proud of San Antonio, coming out of Holmes High School. It's fantastic. Hey, if you know anything about swimming in San Antonio, then you know his name. Woo! Think we got some swimmers in the house tonight. <laughs> that, those people you hear are probably some of almost the 300 All-Americans he coached over 30 years. And when Michael Phelps and the best swimmers in San Antonio or in the world, in, in America, came here for a big Olympic training qualifying meet, they swam in the natatorium with his name on it. Uh, his teaching and coaching, thousands of kids that he's helped. He sees the need to give lower income kids the opportunity to swim. He's been a fantastic role model as a coach, as an administrator, and as a member of the San Antonio sports community. He has been the definition of having a servant heart. He is 2016 Hall of Famer George Block. George is an educator, he's a coach, he is a thought provoker, he is a futurist. There are many adjectives one could use to describe George. Above all, he's, 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 a, he's a person who cares. I just remember the first time I could really move in the water, the feeling was so incredible. George Block swam in high school, at college at Notre Dame, and with the Olympic sport of modern pentathlon, which is what brought him to San Antonio. But it was in coaching other swimmers that he made his mark. Over his nearly 40 years in the sport, George developed nine Olympians, 14 swimmers qualified for the Olympic trials, and his high school swimmers earned 52 UIL state gold medals and more. He had this way of communicating, you can do this, and you can get it done. And those that chose to listen to him really tended to excel. For 35 years, George built the swim program at Northside ISD, influencing thousands of young swimmers and developing coaches, administrators, and facilities. When he retired in 2009 as assistant director of athletics, the district named its pool in his honor. When you really motivate a kid, you really have their soul in your hand. And you have to respect that. It's profound, and it's frightening, and it's humbling. George didn't limit his impact to the pool. He emerged as a civic leader, co-founding our community sports commission, San Antonio Sports. In the very early 80s, I started just writing Dear Mr. Mayor letters, uh, <laughs> saying, have you noticed that every weekend we have these people going out of town <laughs> in every sport, whether it be swimming or whatever, and we have facilities here that if we would clean them up, improve them, or build new ones, we're already a tourist hub. And then one of my ex-swimmers started working in the mayor's office and started getting these letters <laughs> and said, hey, you're writing me all these letters and griping, would you come down for a meeting? He brought that same passion from being a successful swim coach to the three ideals of San Antonio sports. Again, being the events, uh, the youth programs, and the facilities. 32 years later, with George still actively involved, San Antonio sports events have generated $535 million in economic impact. Its youth programs serve thousands of children every year, and it continues to advocate for the development of sports and recreation facilities. Facilities like the new Northside Swim Center. Facilities such as you have in San Antonio, it takes the work of a lot of people, it takes a lot of support, but it starts with a champion. George Block is that champion for swimming, for kids, for San Antonio. And we welcome him into the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame.
<laughs> George, in recognition of everything you've accomplished in your career, and just as importantly, everything you've done to give back to our community. On behalf of the city of San Antonio, the San Antonio Express News and San Antonio Sports, it's my pleasure to induct you into the 2016 Hall of Flying. Splish splash, I was taking a bath. Long about a Saturday night. Yeah. Rub dub, just relaxing in the tub. Thinking everything was all right. Well, I stepped out the tub, put my feet on the floor. I wrapped the towel around me and I opened the door. And then a splish splash. Hold on, can't let you get away that quick, George. Okay, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, George is a very humble man. We could probably get about 500 kids up here that will say that you taught them all kinds of stuff. But I want to ask you this question. What did those kids teach you over the years? Russ told me this would be multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I learned my first day on the job at Northside um, was respect. I, I had come over to Northside from Alamo Heights, and the, and the philosophy at Alamo Heights was a, a good one, but it was you have to earn the players' respect, and the, the, the players have to earn your respect. But when Marvin Gustafson hired me, he said, my teams are all about respect. Yep. It's built on respect. We respect the athletes from day one. We expect the athletes to respect the coach from day one. Respect is a given. What you earn is trust. And it was a typical profound thing you'd hear from Coach Gus, and then you'd laugh about the next six things you heard from him. But that was the first big lesson. Um, you know, when Danny called and said, I got this award, I was thinking how ridiculous. I think my friend John out there always says that all of life is a team sport. And Northside was a team sport. Incredible boards of trustees, incredible athletic directors, incredible superintendents, incredible coaches. Kids are only as great as their parents. We had fantastic parents, and the kids that committed, committed everything. They're fantastic. And um, the, the truth of it is, and now that I got this, I can say the truth, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Those people did everything. But probably the most profound, and I learned it by accident, I was sitting in my office one night. My wife might be a little bit upset to hear this because it was about 9 at night. I was getting ready to come home. And the phone rings, my friend Orb Greenwald, who was at that time being a farmer in Iowa, called. And he said he was swimming laps in this public pool. And every, every night he'd meet this girl. And this girl told him that she wanted to go to the Olympics. And so she had this girl put her on the phone from some public pool in Iowa. And I talked to her. And she was about as far from the Olympics as I am from Shaq, you know. And, uh, but she really wanted to give it a shot. And so... I called some friends who were coaching Division II teams and Division III teams, and we got it set up that she could walk on someplace in Missouri. And, you know, it took about a half hour every night for a week, but we got her to get a shot someplace. And I never heard another word from her. And about four or five years later, I get this card in the mail, and I open it, I don't recognize the return address, don't recognize anything, and it's, uh, it's from this girl telling me she graduated from college, she swam for all four years, finally her senior year made it to her conference, See if I can say this without crying. <laughs> she said, I prayed to God for a miracle, and he sent you. And reading that changed everything for me, the spiritual component of what we do, but also tells that up here, we're not the heroes. The heroes are sitting out at those tables, because when Don came out earlier and asked how many it's their first time, almost no hands went up. These people have been with us forever, becoming answers to some young girl's prayer who they'll never meet. And because of that, I have so much respect for these people out here, because every one of them, through being here and giving and supporting, is answering some young girl's prayer. And I thank all of you for doing that. Ladies and gentlemen, George Block.
I don't know of a more dedicated supporter of San Antonio sports than George Block. And so, George, well overdue, and it's a real honor to induct you into the Hall of Fame. All right, to, uh, to really know our final inductee is to love him, no matter what Spurs fans used to believe. That was not, that was not a popular stance uh, to have in the early 2000s, as I found out by the hundreds of emails that I got from being on News 4 and being a Shaq supporter. How can you say you love Shaq, they would ask me. He's the Spurs' main rival. And anybody who emailed, I would respond, and I'd say, because from the first time he showed up on News 4 in 1988 until now, he's never changed. He's still the 15-year-old jokester kid who grew up to become the most dominant big man in NBA history, a larger-than-life personality who had the game to match it, but neither are as big as his heart. He is the 2016 Hall of Famer. Should I say it like they do in the L.A.? Shaquille O'Neal! This shot has almost become as famous as the big guy himself. The first time San Antonio saw him was on News 4, and this was his first TV interview ever. Well, the secret is me blocking shots and getting rebounds and making my shots well. That's the secret. Shaq was the secret, all right, but not for long. The secret was out. He led Cole High School to a 68-1 and record over two years, and then we watched him fly out of the nest in San Antonio to conquer the world. Shaquille's got the ball. I can't believe it. Oh, oh, oh. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. That's a seven-footer. Are you serious? From the McDonald's All-Star game to LSU to the most dominant rookie in Orlando the NBA has ever seen, Shaquille O'Neal did it all, something he predicted way back at Cole High. After I get my um, degree in college, I want to make about $6.2 million a year. <laughs> That's a little low. I think that's gas money now. The Lakers gave him $120 million in 1996. He led them to three straight championships. He was all NBA 13 times, the NBA's MVP, the finals MVP three times, an Olympic gold medalist, and the list goes on and on. Jack, go get him, boy. 15 NBA All-Star games, three All-Star game MVPs, another championship in Miami, and his place in history is solid. Solid bronze, that is. He has a statue in his honor at LSU, another coming in Los Angeles. His jersey's retired everywhere. In April, he will be a first ballot electee into the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, Mass., and he will be inducted this fall. But basketball doesn't define Shaq. I am Kazam! Yes, he has starred in films and made a platinum rap album and on TV shows. Too many to mention. He returned to LSU to get his bachelor's degree, then added an MBA, and then a PhD in education. That's right, you must call him Dr. Shaq. And every step of the way, he's been nothing but fun. And along with all the fun, he's brought joy to countless others. Shaka Claus is thrilled to partner once again with Toys R Us and the Marine Toys for Tots Foundation to bring smiles to the faces of kids in need on Christmas morning. In 1992, his mom, Lucille, started Shaka Claus. On his own, Shaq bought 2,000 toys for 400 kids, and he's never stopped. 24 years later, Shaka Claus now gives thousands of kids toys that they would never have on Christmas Day. When name brand basketball shoes went for 150 bucks, Shaq developed a shoe for $29 at Walmart. Shaq shoe, actually. So that economically disadvantaged kids could look cool too. He never forgot what his mom Lucille and Big Sergeant Phil taught him growing up. And like I remember these words, if you ever make it big time, make sure you help those in need. Those are things that I do today because of what a man that made $30,000 a year taught me from a woman who was a secretary probably made 20,000 a year. They taught me that. So you know a lot of people when they look at they look at me and the charities that I do. This is from the heart. And he's also never forgotten where he comes from. 
Alma mater, hail to thee, colors green and gold. To you we pledge our loyalty, honor to uphold. Hail to thee, hail to thee, school that we love. And I don't remember the last part. Hail <laughs> to thee. I know that song. He is literally and figuratively the biggest thing to ever come out of San Antonio High School. He is 2016 San Antonio Sports Hall of Famer. Can you dig it? Shaquille O'Neal. Can you dig it? Shaquille, on behalf of San Antonio Sports, the San Antonio Express News, and the City of San Antonio, it is my pleasure to officially induct you into the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations. When people ask me what it's like to know Shaq, I say he, he can make you feel infinitesimal. I'm 5'10", 185 pounds, normal human size. I'm going to show you what it's like to, again, I'm not five years old. Can't get that on. Remember Tom Hanks in Big? At the end of Big, don't rip it. <laughs> Turn around. It's Armani too, man. That's Armani too. That's Armani. Man, I'm. I know. I. I know he can afford it, though. Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> Come over here, big fella. Don't fall off. <laughs> I don't want you. You're already the Hall of Famer, so you should be taller. Seriously, in the 2000s, when they were going up against the Spurs all the time, San Antonio, for the most part, had a, a rival in this guy. But he would always come into town. He would go to lose. There wasn't a rival. They used to boo me all the time. <laughs> I'm like, I'm home, I'm from San Antonio, boo, boo. <laughs> home, he would go to Lulu's Cafe, he would go see his school teachers, and he did more for this community than you would ever know, because most of the time what he did didn't get reported because he didn't want us to report it, because he liked being the bad guy, because the NBA stood for? That's not the reason I didn't like you, I didn't want you all up in my business. <laughs> Nothing but actors. Hey, I want you. I want you to. Talk I about hated you. this guy in 1989. I hate him now. <laughs> I wasn't gonna make you pay for that coat. Hey, your mom's here, and every every Monday morning, Shaq's dad, Sergeant Phil, would be at our doorstep at Channel Four to get a, a VHS copy of his highlights that we would run the night before. We miss Sergeant Phil more than you know. He was a great man, but I know. What Sergeant Phil did for you and what your mom did is why you're the guy you are today. Yeah, it's a four-letter word what they did. It's called belt, B-E-L-T. <laughs> but uh, my mom is here. Stand up, mommy. My favorite person in the world. Love you. <clears throat> my sister, La Aisha Latifa, brother Jamal. Stand up. Uh... Before we get started, are there any lawyers in the house? Raise your hand if you're, you're a lawyer. 
because when me and the mayor was taking pictures, she grabbed my butt, I want to file suit. You saw that, right? The mayor grabbed my butt. I'm suing San Antonio. I'll see you in court, mayor. I don't believe this. But uh, cold teammates, stand up. You guys stand up, because I know this is my award, but I couldn't, I, you know, I couldn't have done it without you guys. Uh, I want to, I want to give praise to one more person, Mingo Ramos. Stand, stand up, stand up, Mingo. Mingo was, Mingo was the first Hispanic person that we met when we got to San Antonio. He introduced me to steak and chicken fajitas. Casa Dueña sauce, he took me to my tierras, La Raza Homes, love you. And this guy right here, he's been good to me since, what, 89, first time I met you? 1989. In the back, I, I uh, confessed to him, I always thought his name was Don Lemon for some reason. When I asked him, I said, are you Don Lemon? He said, no, I'm Don Harris. I was like, oh, my bad. One other guy I want to recognize, Coach Smith, you here? Stand up. Coach Ombi, table 45, I know you're here, Coach Smith. There you are. This guy and this guy, don't let them fool you. I had to become a great basketball player because when I arrived from Germany and went to the office and said I played basketball, both of them said with a heavy Texas accent, you better be good at basketball. If not, I'm gonna get your big some bitch and ass on that football field. You's a big some bitch. You could be on that goddamn line, boy. You could be blocking for me, boy. I like, sir, I don't play football. You better be good. I can see you now in the NFL, you big old, yeah, tell you big old some bitch. I, I know you can play on that line. So, you know, I came, I was like, coach, I don't play basketball. I don't care, big old some bitch. You get on out there and do them football drills. So, you know, they had me out there doing football drills. I come in every day, I'm like, coach, I, I'm a basketball player. I don't care what you say, big some bitch. I can see you playing for the Cowboys right now. So, big old some bitch. I see you out there right now playing for the Cowboys. And then, like, you know, they used to come in a, a, a lunchroom, and I used to get two chicken fried steaks. Be like, I, I knew you was a big son bitch. You got two chicken fried steaks. I knew it. I knew it. Basketball in my ass. I'm going to get your big ass on that, on that football. It is. I, I, I know it's a comment. So thank you, Coach Smith and Coach Medora, because I hate football. I hate it. You guys made me great basketball players. Now, any questions from you? So, um... You're getting the Staples Center bronze statue coming up this year. April is the vote for the NBA Hall of Fame. Yeah, he, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. And he'll be inducted in September. So a big year, but I think this would have to be your biggest moment. No, this is my biggest moment because it, it started here in San Antonio with those 12, 13 guys over there. Stand up. Stand up. Cole, stand up. Started with these guys right here. You know, these guys, these guys taught me how to be a leader. They taught me what it was to be a great player. I read a quote one day from John Wood. He said, the true definition of great players are the ones that make the others around him better. And I realized, I realized early in my junior year when we went 32-1 and one, where I missed two free throws at the end. All my fault. Oh, yeah, against Beverly Hill, a bunch of small white guys like you that can shoot the ball. Bunch of, bunch of little white, yeah, I did. I missed two free throws at the end. Oh, nice little joke. Ha, 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 ha. So we were all in the locker room. We were crying. We were upset. I looked the guys in the face. I said, next year, we're definitely going to win a championship. But, you know, they helped me go to college and become a great player to, in, in, to the NBA, be a great player. Like, you know, I had uh, a guy on my team, Doug Sandberg. Like, I could, like, whenever I got double, triple to him, I can kick it to him in the corner. We had a guy named Sean Jackson. This guy dribbled 15 times in one place and never moved. <laughs> and coaches say, that shit may look good in New York, but down here in San Antonio, boy, you better pass the goddamn ball and cut. Pass and cut, that's all we need. We don't need all that hot dog and all that mustard here, some bitch. Pass the ball right now. And then whenever we look, all right, everybody get on the line. I was a great runner, too, because of these guys, but... I had him, I had Darren Matthew, I had uh, Petrus. I had a guy, Rob, Rob Dunn. He used to get to the basket and just throw it to me. And I'll be like, why are you shooting? He said, I'm not getting no damn scholarship, you shoot. So, well, yeah, you shoot. Joe, my best friend. Uh, so, 
Guys, thank you. I know this is my award, our award. Thank you. I couldn't have done it without you guys. The Hacker Shack was invented by Andy Armando and my other coach over there, Herb Moore. Stand up. Andy right there. Andy was a big, big guy that used to wear some big old Kareem Abdul-Jabbar goggles and high socks, and he used to beat the crap out of me every day in practice. He messed my big toe up, too. I missed it for that big toe. And Bruce Bowen, I hate you, Spurs. I just had to say it. Can I do one thing before we go? I saw this in the movie. I, I always wanted to see if it worked. Ready? The stars at night are big and bright. Deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> Way to go, Sean. Good job. Appreciate you, brother. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, Shaquille O'Neal. Hey, I, hey, I'm not a name brand guy, but my wife got me an Armani Tux, and this is the Shaquille O'Neal collection. I got the short end of the thing. <laughs> I did feel like I was Tom Hanks in the movie Big, though. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your 2016 San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame. Now, we have seen an amazing group of athletes, and the transformative power of sport has had in the life of these Hall of Famers. But tonight is also about the power of sport in the lives of children and supporting the mission of San Antonio sports. Please watch the video. may know San Antonio sports for the premier events we bring to the Alamo City. Justin Stockton to the house. We're proud that the events that we host have delivered more than $527 million to our local economy. What a performance. But our heart beats for kids. more confident about herself. She loves her friends. She loves the sports. She looks forward every day to getting up to go to school just so she doesn't miss eye play. She loves everything about it. I play after school has offered my children a huge opportunity, uh, not only in the, in the after school program to play a different sport and to learn the different sports, but also it's motivated them in the classroom. I play originally uh, started because the superintendents um, of both Hollandale and San Antonio ISD came to us and said our kids are really not getting early stage development in club sports. So golf, tennis, soccer, volleyball, and track and field. iPlay has come in and started an early stage development program for those kids at the third through fifth grade level where there was no program there before. So what we're seeing is results. We're seeing more activity for the kids, better attendance, BMI's lower, and they're actually moving on to participate in sports at a higher level. In five years, iPlay has grown from 15 to 45 elementary schools in Harlandale and San Antonio Independent School Districts, serving more than 1,000 kids. Ignacio Gonzalez is a dedicated dad whose two daughters, Leslie and Jocelyn, are thriving in iPlay after school at Mission Academy. A lot of kids want this opportunity. It gives them energy, enthusiasm, and self-esteem, encouragement, and they're looking forward every day to play with these other beautiful children. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, I play after school fifth grader, Allison Escobedo, 
her mother, Flor de la Cruz, and I play after school coach, Kelly Anderson. Remember the video of Daryl spanking the rest of the world? I feel like that now, going after you, Mr. Shaq. I feel like that guy that came in second. Let me just tell you that I am very blessed and honored to be a part of the iPlay program. I started out when it first began years and years and years ago when my goatee was still blonde. Now it's going to silver. And it's partly due to working with the kids, yelling at them in a positive, uplifting way, of course. I teach at Stonewall Flanders Elementary in Harlandale, and I run the after-school program for the Boys and Girls Club. And I am honored to coach kids like Allison, who when she comes up after me, you'll see why I'm so blessed. In your money that you donate, you're so generous. It goes to such a good cause. Without it, these kids would just, they wouldn't have anything to do. Because uh, you and I both know that club sports, they're out of the financial picture for a lot of these families that I work with. And uh, your generosity allows them to participate in five sports. Daryl, one of them is track. If you ever want to come by and show them how fast you are. Right now they think I'm the fastest person on the world. <laughs> in fifth grade I was. And Shaq, I've heard, not, conf not confirmed, they might have a basketball program. And if they do, feel free. Come on by, give some tips. I'd appreciate it. And by the way, let me, before I turn this over to Allison, I just got to say that Grown Ups 2 is, is arguably my favorite movie with you in it. And I am looking to Grown Ups 3. I'm looking really forward to that. So... Anyway, thank you for your generosity, and once again, I play, uh, oh yeah, you know what, one more, one more thing, I'm sorry. Each of you would find this on your table, and if you'd be so kind to fill it out. And those of you that are brave enough to put your credit card number, I'm sure they'll have an armed escort to make sure no one steals that. But thank you, thank you very much. God bless. Good evening. My name is Allison Escobedo, and I attend Stonewall Flanders Elementary in the fabulous Harindale District. I would like to start by saying thank you to everyone that donates money to the iPlay program. Let me tell you why. The iPlay program gives us 60 minutes of activity every day, and that's a lot considering we only get 15 minutes or even 10 minutes at recess at school. So far, volleyball has been my favorite sport, and I wish that we had more than 60 minutes to practice. I also get to socialize with younger kids, I've made friendships, and I'm able to set a good example for them. The iPay program has helped me with my eating habits and makes me feel better physically. There's a lot of pressure on a fifth grade girl, a middle child, and a sexual assault survivor to look and act a certain way. iPay helps a lot with my confidence. I also want to tell you about my awesome, funny, great, and amazing coach. Coach Anderson knows when to be funny and crack us up and also knows when to be serious and really teaches the sports. This is kind of my therapy when I fall down, so let's, keep, let's help keep I Play Alive by donating lots of money. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Isabel De La Cruz, and I'm a proud parent of two I Play athletes. Through iPlay, I've seen my daughter Allison's confidence in sports thrive like no other. I've always known Allison was a leader, but the leadership she exhibited during the volleyball tournament with iPlay was enhanced, almost like a superpower. During the first volleyball practice, five ice packs were given out. She was counting. I had two nervous athletes at home, but at the tournament, Allison cheered every teammate on, even her little brother. She helped the team gain back their confidence after their first loss. And to witness the improvement in all the athletes, 
was in amazing as well as intense. We're a family of five and we seem to budget just about everything. With the generous donations, registration was free. A plus for our family because both of our elementary school children were able to participate. We live in an apartment and without iPlay, our children would not get the recommended 60 minutes of activity. I'll be honest, without a yard and only a parking lot, I don't let them out to play. My son Joshua had zero interest in sports until I play. The emotions I experienced when he was up first to serve and actually scored a point is unexplainable. I apologize for not starting off by saying how humbled I am to be in a room with such amazing, generous people. Thank you all again, and let's, let's keep iPlay alive. Before I leave this evening, I would like to give a few special thank yous. Mr. Harvey Najim, thank you for supplying us with the grant money for uniforms. Yeah. H-E-B, my little brother says thank you for all the snacks. Yeah, Silver Eagle, my parents say thank you for all their snacks. Mr. O'Neill, my second grade teacher wanted me to give you a wink. <laughs> to everyone here, thank you, and please continue to give money so that more kids can have the opportunity of the life-changing effects of iPlay. Thank you. You know, we can, uh, we can induct famous Hall of Famers, but for all of us that love sports, you know exactly what she was talking about, about when her kid wouldn't have the opportunity to play sports if he didn't have a backyard because he's in an apartment complex, and the joy that that mom gets choked up when her son gets to first base or scores his first run. We all know that, play, that played sports at any level, what, coach, what coaches like Coach Madura and Coach Block mean to us as kids as we grow up and the things that it teaches us about discipline and overcoming adversity. And this is what San Antonio sports is trying to do with so many kids that don't have the opportunities that other kids have. And that's what this organization is about. That's what San Antonio sports does. That's what Harvey Najem does when he donates these backpacks to kids who maybe eat a free lunch and free breakfast at school but don't have an after school snack. And you being here tonight and you giving of your time, your talents, and your treasures is what this is all about. And we thank you so much for what you do. And this is right now what we do at the end of this every single year. And that is our big ask to help keep these programs alive so kids like Allison can continue to enjoy these programs. Thousands of kids are helped every year by San Antonio Sports. So for the next 15 minutes, before the Fab Four comes on, to rock the house, our goal is to raise $50,000 for San Antonio sports. And we're going to do this without even leaving your table. On your table, you have your iPad. And there's a pledge card with instructions. And on the back, it details the three ways how you can make a donation. From your iPad, you can touch donations tab at the home screen, enter your bidder number, and the, the amount that you would like to donate. If you've previously registered for text bidding, you can make donations just by text. Just follow the instructions on the card and you will receive a confirmation of your donation. If you've not already opted in for text bidding, please make your donation on the iPad. And for those of you um, who prefer to enter your bidder number uh, and credit card information on the pledge card on your table, you can do it the old school way. Just put it in the envelope, raise your hand high. We've got volunteers around the room that will pick it up. So you can iPad, you can text, you can do it old school with the, um, the card on the table. 
We've already received $14,000 in advance from people we'd like to thank. Judy Dalrymple, Mr. and Mrs. Greg and Christy Prescott, Mr. and Mrs. Kirk Jorgensen, Mr. and Mrs. Ernesto Ancira, Mr. and Mrs. Russ Bookbinder. So let's keep this going. $50,000 our goal. We got a head start of 14. We want to do this in 15 minutes. So start filling out those cards, start texting, and start on your iPad. Keep your eyes on the screens. We're going to have a running total. And we need to get off of this stage so that the Fab Four can come on. So in the meantime, my friend Joe Reinigle is off stage, and he's over there, and I'm going to send it over to Joe, and he's going to keep tabs on how we're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, a big hand for our inductees into the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations, fellas. Joe, it's all yours. Thank you, Don. I got the Fab Three up here on the little stage right here. Kate Rogers with HEB. Man, what a night, huh? What an incredible night, yes. Just honored to be a part of it. You know, when you see somebody like Allison up here and that family, that this means so much to them. HEB is so generous. But what is it about San Antonio sports and the kids there that means so much to you guys? Well, you know, I've been with HEB for 18 years because I started when I was 12. <laughs> and um, we've always been a strong supporter of SA Sports for so many reasons, because of the amazing events they bring to San Antonio, which are great for our economy, but more importantly, what they do for our young people. And I think what you heard tonight is a testament to the power of iPlay. I have two little boys myself. They're 11 and 8. They're involved in all sorts of sports, and I know what it brings to their lives. As an employer, we see the development of those important skills you want to see in a future employee, right? Teamwork, collaboration, communication. All of those are developed through programs like iPlay, and we're just so thrilled that all of these guys in this room tonight are supporters of the program along with us. Well, we appreciate you. We appreciate everything HEB does. Now, I want to put that back on the screen up here if we can, the little thermometer thing. Right? $14,000 where we're at. We need to get to $50,000. Now, keep this in mind. If you didn't purchase a table or buy something in the live auction or the silent auction, this is your way to help. A couple of bucks. Right, Bruce Bowen? That's right. Give me this thing. <laughs> Shaq's not the only one to know how to rock the mic. That was a joke. That was a joke. He is the only one here that knows how to <laughs> rock the mic. No, but everybody, look, think about this. Everybody loved the 4th of July here in San Antonio. Am I right? Yeah. You are, you are going to blow so much money on fireworks and things like that. Let's put the money where it should go, back into kids' lives. Let's invest in what they're doing because so many of us that have been involved in things like this, you look at us now and people talk about, oh, wow, look at how great Shaq was. That is true, but he started somewhere because someone was vested in him and his career. Same thing with the Cole team of 1989. That was a great year, by the way. I was a senior at that time as well. Little shout out to you guys. But again, it's about the kid. Put the thing on the screen and we can see the money going up. Dig into your pockets. Come on, people. Don't get quiet now, because some of you all, once the music start, y'all going to get a little loose. Get loose. But see, I want you to get loose right now, so you got to shake some of them checks out your pockets. <laughs> Ladies, come on. Get next to your man. Rub on him a little bit. Say invest in these kids' lives, because it is important. We learn so much about life through sport. That's the, I think that's the common thread with all the guys that are up here celebrating this great momentous occasion is that it's through sport that we learn to be better leaders, to be better teammates. You heard it from Shaq himself, a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's talking about these things. And some of you all want your kids to be involved like Shaq. So invest, invest, invest. Let's, where's it at? Th that's it? Just 32? Come on, people! Hey, Bruce, we got a deal for him. What's the deal? What's the deal? Again? You think they still want to hear from you? You do it. You do it. What am I doing? Hold on now. We have an authentic four-time NBA champion, Olympian, high school state champion, and hold on. Let me finish. <laughs> Goodness. 
uh, platinum artist jacket. That this was his jacket. He just, you know, Shaq, you know, can you dig it? See, I remember those days. It, it was nothing nice looking at him when he was in that purple and gold. And I always wondered why he played so well here. I did early on. But at home, exactly. But look, we're going to auction off this jacket. Forget the fact that it was worn by someone else first, but Shaq wore this jacket. And, I mean, you can't get better quality than this. What a, what a conversation starter. At his Hall of Fame induction. There, there it is. So, I mean, I think I, I, that, is, that is really something. I mean, you all can put this, frame it, and you talk about how Shaq wore this at his, at, his, at his famous induction in San Antonio. How about that? Uh, can we put 30? We've gone down. Uh, we, <laughs> all right. All right, I'm going to get my, that, where's, where's T-Bone at? Can I, can I get 2,500, 2,500, 2,500, 2,500? I need somebody to go out there and, and come on. Well, you guys, you guys aren't, hey, okay, look, not, not only that, they will come to your house and perform at your birthday party or your kid's birthday party. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody, please, help me, please. We, we, come on, we got to go. We just, we're, we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. Please, I, 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 I'm saying this. we Come on, people, come on. $1,000, $1,000 for this Shaq Warren, four-time four NBA champ, four-time Olympian. He'll, I don't, I don't know if he'll do that. I don't know. I don't, you get it done? He, he's going to get it done and he's going to autograph it. Not a black marker. He needs silver Sharpie, kind of like Spurs silver. Oh, 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 oh. There's a little... Is he still here? Okay. I hope he didn't hear that one. No, but again, people, you guys, you guys in the back. Come on, we need your help. We need your help. Let's keep this, let's keep it going up. 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 But at Quarter Moon Productions, we'll pay the one thousand dollars for that jack. Big Bob. Now big big shot Bob. Now, can we, can we add, can we, oh, I like it, I like it. Now, again, you know, I'm going to be up here talking until we get, I'm not letting anybody leave. You're not going home until we get our goal. Now, again, I'm going to go back to the fireworks. You just, we, we, we spend that money, that money's gone. But we heard a heartfelt speech tonight by a young lady who is living proof of what an investment in a child's life can do. So please, everyone, someone invested in me as a kid, and I'm so thankful for that. Now it's our turn to try to invest in some of these other kids. Please, I know some of you guys that do have kids, Kate, but it's about us continuing the process of spreading our love and joy to help these kids have a better life. Now, it's hard to do it in an apartment complex. We all know that. So we need places to go. We need kids to have coaches they can count on. You know, to be able to reflect and think about all the things that have transpired in their lives and say that coach, that somebody was able to help them out to become a better person. 34, come on people, we're getting close. It, it's like Pop says, pounding the rock. Come on, we're pounding the rock. Jacob Reese, he's a really good Arthur. Yes, he is. He's, yeah, I've, I've read a lot of stuff. Oh, 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 on how the other half lives. Yeah. So, um, what, what, else, what else shall we talk about here? I always talk about your perfect hair, so we're not even going to go over that. Easy now. Easy now on the follically challenged. Come on. We need about $16,000. We need about $16,000. That's what we need. Fifty. Th Look, the Fab Four is going to be coming up in a moment, but we need some money first. We need $16,000. All right, so get on your iPads. 
A little at a time goes a long way. You guys have been so generous. Let's cap this night off with a cherry on top and hit that $50,000 goal that we need. That's a sports thing, right? Encourage these folks, right? I mean, I think uh, for those folks who didn't find maybe what they needed at the silent auction or didn't make a big purchase at the live auction, this is your opportunity, right? Because every $50, every $100 counts to get, to, get us to that $16,000 goal. So come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. That's our new rally cry, all right? Thank you, Enrique Segura, for the donation. You see that? You're famous. You get up there. What do you got? What? what, what? What is this? 250. Thank you. All right, there's 250 bucks. Make sure they know he just. Hey, $250 to add to our total there, please. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's slowly but surely. I, you know, I think that thing is just it's stuck or something. Is it stuck? It seems stuck. It's, it's rebooting. It's rebooting. Well, when it reboots and comes back on, we need $50,000 up there. Mr. and Mrs. Brandon Allen, thank you for your donation. How about that, Mr. and Mrs. D.W. Rutledge? Coach Rutledge, thank you. All right, they're coming. See, you're famous up there. I see a lot of names going, but the numbers aren't moving. Do you, am I seeing that right? I, you are. I think that our calculator might be stuck. But I'm curious because, um, you know, Bruce obviously had a lot of coaches in his life who made a difference, like the coaches in I play. So I'm interested to hear from you about what the coaches in your life taught you and inspired you to go on to do what you did with the Spurs. Well, you know, as, as we were talking earlier, I say that sports is just, I think, an avenue to teach us life lessons. And so we actually learn life lessons through sport. And, and I've learned so many. But one of, one of many lessons that, uh, that allowed me to understand that I wasn't bigger than anything or the game, and when I was in element, junior high school, I was going to play Babe Ruth. And so baseball was my first love, and I decided I didn't want to play for this other coach because he was kind of tough. He was, a, he was a disciplinarian. And so back then, we didn't have the video games, or we didn't, I didn't have a cell phone. It, I don't even think anybody had a cell phone back then. But my buddies were going to practice, and I was left in my neighborhood by myself and just, just there. Everybody's going to practice. They, they sort of had a life. So my buddy says, Bruce, we still need guys. You should come on out. I said, okay, I'm going to come on out. Okay, so I put my stuff on. I go to practice, and I say, Coach Young, I'm here to play. And I'm looking just like this. I'm here to play. And he said, Really? All right. Well, hey, if we need you, we'll call you. <laughs> now, I had to pick up my face, put it back, and as I walked home, all I could think about was how, how can I make the most out of this? And will he ever call me? He called me that evening, but I think that was a moment for me to understand that I wasn't bigger than anything else. And I was good in baseball, but I wasn't that good. And so now, from that point on, I took on a different respect about the game, about the game of life, about dealing with people. It was more about respect. You have to respect the game. That's something that I never would have thought of had I not gone through that moment. So you fast forward 30 some odd years, I get with Greg Popovich, and I'm already, I'm, I understand the mindset of, di of a disciplinarian and the way that he allowed me to think more about others as compared to myself. Now, you got to tell us, too, you played for Pop, great deal of respect for Pop. He had a great deal of respect for you. Is he really that mean? Is he mean? No, I think you would be the one to talk. It's, it's funny because he's a coach. So you think about this. Think about all the great people that you respect. Mom, dad, grandma, granddad, and they're just... They're just in their way. That's who they are. They don't believe in showing favoritism even when they can. And I think the, the biggest thing with Pop is that you don't try to act too smart. You know, he'll chew you up. He, he's a very intelligent individual. And so I think that's where people go wrong. And it's like, yeah, I might ask him this question. He's never heard this. And then he just, he just, he gives you a, a stare. 
and, and then next thing you know, you're like, yeah, I, I have no more questions. But I'm going to give you, I'm going to give everybody a, a funny pop story if they want to hear it. Do you all want to hear this story? <laughs> Uh-oh, hey, well, we're going to have to save it. I, what, we cut, well, what? Next, ne next year? Next year. Come back next year, Bruce Bowen's story.